If you're involved in the construction industry, you'll know how demanding it is and how important it is to be as efficient as possible. Statistically, the construction industry produces about 50% of landfill waste. That's a figure which is reasonably alarming. We think we can do something about that. On average, building just one new home will create four tonnes of waste. Historically, sending waste to landfill might have felt like the easiest, cheapest and most efficient thing to do, but things are changing. Disposal costs are going up, legal requirements are increasing, there's more demand on resources and materials, and customer expectations are shifting. It also just doesn't make sense to be throwing so many valuable resources into a big hole in the ground. Right here in the Waikato, we have lots of amazing organisations rethinking their approach to waste in a way that's better for business, better for our environment, and better for our communities. Let's find out what some of them have been up to. So at Foster's, waste reduction through the construction process is becoming business as usual. We get more and more clients inquire around how we're going to manage waste um, on their sites, not only from a financial point of view, but obviously an environmental point of view. Yeah, 100% sustainability is very important to the, to the future of, of our country and, and to the world generally. Um, I've obviously got young children and I'm, I'm very focused on protecting their environment for, for them into the future. We are going to run out, aren't we, of certain things. So. We do need to take those opportunities now to, to change that and, and work out and be resourceful through that. Some Waikato organisations have found measuring their waste is a great place to start on their journey to reducing it. Managing our waste starts with measuring. We need to measure our waste, quantify it, track it, so therefore we can formulate ways of reducing it. Well, if we don't measure, we don't know how far we've come and what progress we're making. So I think there's a lot of reasons why we should measure things right across our, our business, but it's particularly important in waste management because the results are obviously very important to our community and to our environment. It also enables you to bring along your stakeholders with you and, and create that momentum. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a dashboard which collates all the information across all the regions, across all our projects, and then we sort of benchmark each other against how we're progressing. We have a dashboard within Fosters and we share that amongst all of our Fosters people and our key suppliers um, to make sure we're all on the same wavelength to getting to that, that outcome. Here's what some Waikato organisations are doing to reduce waste at the design stage. Yeah, so our design philosophy is where we can, we'll design waste out on any project. So at the de design phase, it's incredibly important to start thinking about waste reduction. When you sit down and look at a building and how it should construct, how it should be lived in by the users and how it should be used and enjoyed from a comfort perspective, your materials are very, very important. So we would look at it from a design phase of the materials we were using and give them three sort of key tests, right? So um, how will we replace those materials? Um, where will they go if we need to replace them? If the building needs to be refurbished, which they often do in nine and 10 years when the tenants change, you know, what would happen to those materials in their entirety? When the base building's out of its economic life, what happens to the construction materials that go into that? when it ends. So asking ourselves those three questions as we go through the design phase is extremely important. Yeah, modulation is, a, is an easy option. Uh, as an example, we built the student accommodation at the Waikato University and uh, we modulated all the wall sizes and the ceiling sizes. We designed the layout so that it all could be done in single sheet sizes, so there was no waste. Uh, one of our, I suppose, the strengths of what, what we've done is designing around older buildings and, and, and not taking up too much and keeping, keeping quite a bit of the building so we're not, you know, design around that and celebrate some of the things that are cool of the old architecture. And, yeah, when we're doing the initial site layout, we look at what is the appropriate location to put the, the recycle station and bin collections to not just make it easy for the, for the tenants, but also for the, the collection providers to access. You know, if we're building a new building for, for tenants who are going to be occupied, it's extremely important to work with them from the start to see how they're going to manage their waste, their day-to-day -day waste in that building. And there's obviously plenty of levers you can pull around composting, etc. But you've got to work really closely with that tenant, so it's a real partnership on how they're going to use the building when you deliver it to them. Some organisations in the Waikato have looked at their procurement as a way to reduce waste. 
To reduce waste from a procurement point of view, we're starting to have those conversations with our suppliers. Uh, do products need to come to site in packaging? Do we need packaging at all? Yeah, so we, we look at different ways of procuring our products and, and, and look, we want to use more timber and, and we have in, in, in a couple of our projects used timber for our floorings and, and bits and pieces. So it is a drive for our company to look at ways to, to use local products and, and, and I think ultimately using trees is pretty cool. In the early procurement phases at Foster's, we sit down as a team, um, get a good in-depth understanding of the drawings. And from there, we sit down with our suppliers, look at the products being used and order links accordingly. When we were working with suppliers for this build, um, it was really important for us to have the conversation with them about the option of things like a take-back scheme. If we ordered too much material, would they take that back? That was a, that was a, and we got some wins there. Uh, the second thing was around the packaging that arrives to site with their product. Firstly, could they send their product without all of the packaging? Um, and if they couldn't, would they take the packaging back? Um, I think there kind of has to be that producer responsibility as well. Yeah, when it comes to procurement, I think it's all about engagement. So I'd start having the conversations with the people you're using, your subcontractors and suppliers. So as an example, we're using large bale bags uh, to get material into site, we unload the material and then that, those bale bags get reused multiple times and it just gets us away from single-use plastic. Here are simple ways some Waikato organisations are reducing waste on site. What we are doing on site at the moment with regard to waste reduction is sorting our waste. So we have certain areas for cardboard, steel, glass, metals and general waste. Sorting um, our waste, all the material streams that came to site, was a really important part of the project. Um, there was a lot of collaboration between ourselves, Fosters, and then Fosters managing all of the contractors on site as well. And then that just meant that when it left site, we were ensuring that those streams went to the right places, recycling if they could, repurposing if that was the case, or worst case scenario, to landfill. But we had a really limited amount of that, 10% in fact. A big part of it is knowing the products before they come to site and setting up the bins accordingly. Take made for instance, we, we pull a lot of stuff out of there from the demolition and then we keep a lot of the stuff as well to reuse, so like different types of timber, native timber, and reuse that through the fit outs going forward. Yeah, we have a major focus on reusing materials. Like as an example, this particular project here, our target is to reuse, a, reuse the shutters as a minimum of five times. Um, and when they're finished here, they'll get repackaged, cleaned up and sent off to another project. Timber, for boxing, for builder's pegs, for formwork. Our concrete waste we use for deadmen, um, supporting precast panels and, and different elements. We also use concrete waste for laydown areas to mitigate dust. When renovating, refurbishing or removing buildings, here are ways some Waikato organisations are keeping things out of landfill. On a recent project with regards to demolition, we discovered upon investigation that we could actually reuse the whole building, um, dismantle it, reuse the whole building, uh, recycle um, the remaining products uh, at a financial advantage to our client. Oh, well look, I mean, we, we, we were pretty led by, by the boys at Downey, you know, that we, we obviously tended for a construction company and, you know, the, the brief was We've got an existing building which needs to disappear. So that was all part of the discussion and I think they really led the talks on, hey, another way to do it rather than just knock it all over and put it in a landfill. It's kind of a no-brainer because there's, there's some huge benefits that can come with it without, without a huge amount of sacrifice. Yeah, again, it's all in the planning. So we, we work with the demolition partners on where we can repurpose or re-salvage. A recent example is we had a large three-storey villa here in Hamilton and uh, collectively we were able to divert 75% of that material away from waste. The things that we've learned through our journey is probably mostly around not being in a hurry to get rid of things, you know, and work out a way and be creative around the ways that we can obviously replace or redistribute and reuse the stuff that comes out of these older buildings or the building itself. Yeah, so demolition material, we load everything out in trailers and we bring it back into our yard here in Hamilton and then we will redistribute what we can use. We also work with a company called Men's Shed where we'll donate material to them so it can be reused in personal projects and we also work with community groups and, um, and help distribute material around so it gets uh, a second lease of life. 
Another example of uh, reusing materials is actually rehoming materials for the likes of Habitat for Humanity. We would be open to the opportunity to take anything that we see value in that may either go into the restore or into our home repair program. When families are able to close a window which keeps the exterior environment out of their house for the first time in years, that's to me that's the value. Um, not only is it keeping it out of the out of landfills, but it's adding memories and more stories to a family home. Here's what some Waikato construction companies are doing to create a culture of change. Yeah, creating a culture is very important for us. We have a mantra in Naila Love of doing the right thing, so it's driven from the top down, and we're very fortunate to have staff and subcontractors that have bought into our vision. We have a sustainability committee that are passionate and massively motivated and innovative about creating new ways of reducing waste on a daily basis. Yeah, we don't have an official, this is our session of, you know, how do we reduce waste or whatever. It's just, it comes naturally because it's a cultural thing within our organisation. And that comes from me. Yeah, I see environmental responsibilities very similar to health and safety responsibilities. We're used to those health and safety responsibilities now and, got, and have buy-in from the industry. Waste reduction is part of our culture right from the outset um, through procurement, early engagement with our subcontractors and also engaging the team through inductions on site. I guess one piece of advice I would give would be really simple, get started, right? Try and understand the waste you're producing, surround yourself with people who are able to give you advice on it if you don't know where to start and, and start measuring it no matter how small it is. If we're all striving to be the best we can at what we do, this now has to extend to being environmentally conscientious. I actually think it's, a, it's the price of citizenship, you know, the, being responsible with the resources that we have from our country and from the world and we need to use these in a way that actually makes a difference. Instead of defaulting to throwing the materials away, let's stand back and consider the value that those products have to our community. Some advice I'd give others in the industry would be to start small and make your goals achievable. Just start with one waste stream doesn't matter where you start, just start. Yeah, what I'd say to others in the industry is collectively we can make such a difference. So I challenge you to get started. <laughs>